Photographers with a singular vision can spend years working on a narrative to create awareness and encourage debate. But their commitment is often drowned out by flashier, more instant forms of image making and storytelling. Enter the Prix Picte, which has, since 2008, championed and honoured the exceptional work of photojournalists and photographic artists who illuminate environmental issues. The still image has as much power as it ever had, in spite of the ubiquity of the printed image in, on the internet and films, videos and everything. I think this exhibition shows that single images can have as much raw power and emotion and can engage so strongly with the senses that you simply cannot forget them. The theme of the 2014 Prix Picte is consumption and has been honoured with an exhibition at the V&A in London, a museum with a prestigious international reputation and a long-standing commitment to photography. But there is a history of the debate about consumption. Even before the 1968 Joy Revolutions, uh, there was a huge debate around the globe that this is the end of consumption and we have to redefine the world, we have to reinvent the world. That was the original ideas, the, the beginning of the green ideas. And I think it's great to have it 50 years later as a kind of resume, a summary, and probably of what is the legacy of that discussion and what does it mean for the future. Shortlisting the photographers is an act of curation. The variety of styles and diversity of subjects united in one exhibition acts as a stimulant for thought. The alchemy of the imagery is potent including New York-based artist Laurie Simmons, who touches on notions of obsession and addiction. The love dolls speak to the tragedy of choices. Because I found the love doll and she was basically a blank slate, I could introduce the character to everything that, you know, Western culture has to offer, from a hundred pairs of shoes when we only have two feet, to piles and piles of candy that would ultimately make us feel ill. So I think that in terms of the consumption theme, in a sense, my work has always spoken to that. Obsession of a different kind surfaces in the work of Beijing-based artist Hong Hao, who spent 12 years scanning objects he consumed day to day to explore the intimate relationship between human beings and objects in today's hyperventilated consumer society. I would like to show, through my personal experience, an observation of the contemporary mode of living. Especially in this age of consumption, when people and material have established a codependent relationship. Does this relationship stem from our genuine need, or does society impose such a concept on us, that we absolutely need all these objects? Can we survive without these objects? What effect do these objects have on our values? Nominated photographer Adam Bartos delves into the yard sale economy, an unintentional sustainability practice, and by extension, ponders notions of global manufacturing and overconsumption. I'm very interested in objects in general, um, design, industrial objects, the life of objects, how Things change over time and change in our imaginations. And so yard sales is a kind of ready-made situation to explore those issues. And when you think of, of these objects, there's the built-in obsolescence that is very desirable from the point of view of people who are making and selling goods. So yard sales extend the life of these things. And I think you begin to think about um, how much we need. And the winner is Michael Schmidt. Former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan is honorary president of the Prepic Day, and he awarded the 2014 prize of 100,000 Swiss francs to German photographer Michael Schmidt. His collection of 60 images dramatically displayed in a graphic formation is called Lebensmittel and explores the subject of how we feed ourselves. It's a curious body of work that forces the viewer to pause for thought. And it's this special power photography can have that Kofi Annan recognizes and applauds.
What is really wonderful is to get the artists engaged and to show us what we are doing to our world. Once you've gone through the exhibition, you have to leave it asking yourself the question, can we continue to consume as if there's no tomorrow? Can we continue to consume without thinking of future generations and what we are doing to this planet? There's ab absolute connection between climate change and the crisis of climate change and the political tensions we see around us. Uh, first of all, climate change is an all-encompassing threat. Threat to our health, threat to our food security, threat to our uh, clean water. And people fight over scarce resources. It will lead to conflict, it will lead to migration. It's all interconnected. And so I'm happy that we have prices like this, which brings the issue to the fore. For Monocle in London, I'm Gillian DeBias.